I'm Todd Easton, and recently Kent State University honored me by becoming a University Distinguished Teaching Professor. It's not that I'm a great professor, it's that I devised a scheme that helped me become an exceptional teacher. And this scheme is called Lecture-Based Tutoring. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Lecture-Based Tutoring. I think it's helpful to understand how it was created because it provides some of the information and some of the background so you can see why it's developed and why it's effective. So I developed this method shortly after I got my PhD when I was the head athletic mathematical coordinator at Georgia Institute of Technology. Now at Georgia Tech, every student must pass business calculus in a finite math class. This means that people working on trying to become an NFL player or an NBA player or a Major League Baseball player, they have to pass calculus. Obviously, this is a very, very stressful situation because if they fail calculus, they may not be available for a bowl game. They may not be able to play next season. And so it was a very critical, both to the institution and to the athletic program, that the students did well in, well in these classes. The way the program ran is that every student was required to show up for two, for two hours during a week and we'd meet in groups of four to ten. And the goal was to try and help them become better at math. Following the advice of the previous coordinator, I sat down and I started tutoring people. They'd work a problem, I'd go around the room, and it was pointless. I couldn't get around to everybody. They, I, people were doing stuff besides math, and I'm like, this isn't right. So I went to a lecture. Now I was up in front of everybody. I was working problems very fast. I could tell that I was losing them. I had no idea when I lost them. It wasn't nearly as effective. So talking to other people, they said, why don't you call people to the board? So I started calling people to the board, and this was better. The students came up to the board, they started working a problem, I tutored them through. Some of the students weren't paying attention, but it was at least a little better, we'd get through a few more problems. Um, but in the end, they'd get to something like a half plus a third, they would add it and they would get to, say, a fifth. And then everybody would laugh at them, say, oh, you don't know how to add fractions, that's a third grade skill, and they'd feel more or less as a failure as they'd go back to their seat. So I said, this isn't working out very effectively either. And so I started instead just tutoring them directly at their seat. Why do they need to come to the board? So I'd sit there, I'd ask him a question, we'd go through the whole problem, and it was actually really effective. I could go through a lot of problems, all those mathematical errors were gone. I kept control of the classroom, so I knew how fast the class was moving, and all these problems were solved. But while I'm doing this, the other students are still talking about their date or their game or something like that, and I didn't have everybody engaged. So at some point, I said, why does one student need to work the whole problem? And at this point, I would ask one person a question, and it'd be the first part of the problem, I'd ask the second, third, and I'd get through five or six people in every problem. Suddenly, I'm going around the room so fast that all those side conversations stopped because they knew they would have to finish off the problem, and they wanted to pay attention, not look stupid. And suddenly, I had it where I was able to individually provide attention to each student, and I was also able to get through a lot of problems, and everything worked out great, and overall, the GPA of the students was the highest ever. They all, the student athletes, GPA rose by 0.8 over that time frame. Good. So I'm going to multiply this row Then I got a job here at Kansas State University, and I just started lecturing. And as I was lecturing, I got my evaluations back. I was really quite disappointed to find out I was just an average teacher. Um, during my second year, the department required me to enroll in a teaching quality course. Um, there, the focus of the course was on active learning. And active learning is to incorporate students into the discussion and the lecture, and the idea is to make sure that they are paying attention. And it's been shown to be fairly effective as a teaching tool. So I tried a lot of those methods and I didn't like any of them. I kept losing control of the classroom. Not all the activity was actually learning. And so I was kind of frustrated. At some point I asked somebody there and said, hey, can I just ask a student a question, a particular student a question? They're like, it's your class, do whatever you want. And so I'm like, oh, I'll just go back and do what I did at Georgia Tech and just see if it can work in a large classroom. And that's what I did. And I ended up creating the first class in lecture-based tutoring. And as I was doing this, it became very successful. My teacher ratings were so much better that I started moving every one of my classes to lecture-based tutoring. Now, for a class to be considered lecture-based tutoring, here are the rules you need to follow. First, you need to devise a scheme to ask every student in the class a question. You can't just ask selected students. You can't ask a general question. You have to ask every student a question. Me personally, I keep a stack of three by five cards with everybody's name on it, and I'll ask the person with the name on the top, and I'll slide it to the net bottom, and I'll ask the next person. I just go through the, the, the cards like that. That makes sure I ask every student in the class a question. Okay. Once you've asked them a particular question, if they answer correctly, you can move on or add additional insight. If they ask incorrectly, which is my favorite, by the way, then you get to tutor them. You get to find out why they answered the way they did. You get to provide help and insight and so that they can help learn how, the, um, how to solve the problem. Fundamentally to this is that you need to ask a ton of questions. 
you're looking at asking 20 to 50 questions per hour. And the idea is that you want to move rapidly around the class. Students don't necessarily know exactly when they're going to be asked, so they have to pay attention a little more often. And you know for at least 30 or 60 seconds, they are paying full attention because they are talking directly to you. How, did, how does it work? It's worked fabulous for me. My goal here is to help other people learn about lecture-based tutoring and to potentially implement it. Um, take a half an hour of your life, watch the, watch the example videos, maybe some help videos, and learn about it, see if you can implement it and improve your teaching style too. Thank you for your time.